Good morning. good morning. Boy, it's good to feel good. Yes, yes. I love this teaching. And even though I have studied it for 40 years, sometimes I forget that there is only one thing going on. You can call it anything that you want, spirit, the divine, God, infinite mind, creative force, whatever it is, there's only one thing going on and we don't get to take a vacation from being a powerful, creative, spiritual being living in this life. That every thought that we think sets spiritual law in motion. And we think a lot of thoughts. Every word that we speak sets spiritual law in motion. And every action that we take sets spiritual law in motion. in motion all the time, every moment of every day. And the good news about this is that every thought, word, and deed we have sets spiritual law in motion. So we are the ones in charge of what happens from setting spiritual law in motion. The not so great part of that is, is that when we forget, when we think we can have a pass, when we think, well, I'll just indulge in this anger, resentment, victimization for a little while, I'll stop before something really bad happens. I won't even go to that old joke. I won't do that. <laughs> then what we get is the result of spiritual law being set in motion. And so, when we can embrace our power and be clear about who we are, anything is possible. Miracles are an everyday occurrence. Magic is always in the air. And when we forget or when we get spiritually lazy, we can create some really interesting, oh, we don't call them problems anymore, we call them opportunities. <clears throat> And I, I look at people, and, and you know, I've been kind of um, re recuperating for the last couple of weeks. Uh, I came back from Florida and somehow bought into the idea of germs, which I don't believe in until I do, <laughs> and found myself knocked out for about a week and a half or two weeks. And then I had a, a laser procedure on my face about a week and a half ago, which is a prophylactic skin cancer treatment that my uh, dermatologist and plastic surgeon think I should have every year just to make sure that nothing gets out of control. So that kept me inside and down for a while. I wasn't allowed to see the, the light of day. I felt a little bit like how vampires must feel. No, the sun, ah! <laughs> so I, I had some uh, ruminating time, time to think about how we all are and how we use this amazing gift of spiritual power to create our lives and what interesting trajectories we go on. It seems like we can either take this teaching and get that all of the power and presence of the divine is in us right now, or we can look at the world from a sense of separation and lack and victimization, and you know we are so good at this that we create experiences that look smack dab just like we thought they were gonna look. And then because we created that experience, we look at it and go, well, I was right all along. You know how much we love to be right? And then we can say, I was right about how this is. Not realizing that we are the ones deciding our path. So I look at the way people operate. I look at how we use this. This is out of uh, Wallace Waddle's The Science of Getting Rich and The Science of Being Great. I think it's out of The Science of Being Great, which was the trigger for Rhonda Byrne and all of that law of attraction craze that swept the country about 10 years ago. And Wallace Waddle's, I love my Wallace Waddle's book. It's the first book that I ever read on uh, as an audio book and put it on the internet because I love this book so much and it speaks such truth to me. It says that if you are bringing more to life than you take, then you're on the positive side. I, I learned that in early science of mind teachings, it was called the universe is never debtor that you put the universe in your debt. You keep setting spiritual law in motion, and that has to keep repaying 
over and over and over again, but like a, uh, a, an old timey pump. I used to have a, a 40 acre farm in Wachula, Florida with a couple of old horses in it. And every morning we'd have to go out and pump the pump to get the water to fill up the big galvanized thing for the horses. And there was always a bucket of water by the pump because the pump kept going dry every day, it'd go dry. And you always had to save a bucket of water and pour it into the top of the pump and then get it primed and start pumping. And once you had that pump primed, you could pump all day long. But as soon as you stopped pumping, it would seep out and it would go dry and you couldn't just go out and pump your water anymore. You had to, to do something to get it going. So setting spiritual law in motion is like priming that pump it's like setting uh, the universe in your debt, and then you always get that payback on it. And you'd think that we'd learn, you know? <sighs> but still, we come up into situations, and, and I've had a chance to talk to people over the last couple of weeks and, and kind of get a little bit of a sense of, of where some people are coming from, and so this talks for you. Still, sometimes we look at the universe as us and them. We are outer referenced instead of inner referenced. And we think that our good is going to come from outside of ourselves from someone else. And we come into this teaching and we go, well, I'm going to stop selling myself short. I'm going to stop undercutting my value. I'm spirit in form. I'm going to demand that my worth is realized which means that you now need to give me what I have thought is the equivalency of my worth and my value. And if you don't give that to me, then I'm going to get really mad at you because you're not fulfilling my desire to have my value seen. That is backwards. Backwards, backwards, backwards. Because first of all, nobody has our value. Nobody has your good. Nobody has that which is going to finally make you feel like you're on top of your game, that you're, you're being respected and viewed as something of great value and wealth. Nobody's got that, and they can't give it to you because it's not yours. What they have is theirs, and what you have is yours. Now, compare that with the alternative of saying, I am the magnificent presence of spirit, all that God is, is what I am right here and right now. So I always have more than enough. I have more than enough time, more than enough opportunity, more than enough patience and love, more than enough money, more than enough whatever it is. I always have more than enough, and I'm going to bring that more than enoughness into every word, every thought, and every deed of my life, because I am always setting spiritual law in motion. And so as I come into an experience, I come in for more than enough. Not what can I get? Not I did this last week and how in the world do you want me to do it this week? Not you didn't acknowledge me and so I am somehow less than, not any of that. I am more than enough. So do you need something from me? Great, I've got more than enough. If you have an opportunity to be generous, you should take it. Because what that does is that sets in law that I have more than enough so that I can be generous, so that I can give out into the world. Wallace Waddles says one of the tenets of being rich and getting great is to overfill your place, to always give out more than you take. And so people say, oh, Barbara, that's going to make me a patsy. What was that in, in transactional analysis terms? That's dumb Dora doormat. No, that's power. Because no matter what it is that I have created in life that is asking me to show up, I have more than enough. There's nothing outside of me. There's only that reflection of myself. And so if I am in an opportunity that says, well, Barbara, do you have enough time for this? Of course I have enough time for this. Time doesn't exist. There's only the eternal now. It's not going anywhere. Of course I have more than enough time for this. Well, Barbara, do you have enough understanding of this? I did taxes last week. Whoa! I have the wisdom and the intelligence of the universe right at the point of me. Of course I have enough understanding of this. I have enough intelligence of this. Of course I have enough genius to carry this out, whatever it is. Of course I do, I always have more than enough and I'm not going to chintz in my world. 
What happens when you chintz? I may need it later. The universe hears, you're going to need this later. And sure enough, in the eternal now, later shows up and I needed it. Instead of, I always have more than enough. And I can always give whatever it is because I always have more than enough. I am an eternal wellspring through which spirit moves in all of its infinite bounty. That's what I am. And I'm going to bring that into every word, every thought, and every action in my life. When I see people do that, their lives flourish. When I see people look and see, how can I make this better? Because I bring betterment with me. John and I have, have all of our lives together had a motto that we always leave things better than we found them. When we used to live in rental places, we always left them better than we found them. We would landscape them and do a little remodeling and all of that. We left it way better than we found it. Whenever we are anywhere, one of our thoughts is leave it better than you found it. And we have a lot of people in this center who do that. Every Sunday morning, Janelle comes in at 7.30 and she either makes coffee and bread, or she plugs in the coffee and makes bread and sets up the table covers and the salt shakers. She goes around and unlocks all of the doors so that whenever people come early, the doors are open, everything is ready. She does that every week, every week for years and years and years. She overfills her place. And John L., I have watched your life get better and better and better through the years here. I look at other people. April Connor comes in on Tuesdays and does all of the PowerPoint. And then she comes in on Friday and checks it all and to see what changes have been made. She overfills her space. The people who are in the kitchen, they're at, today is Taco Sunday. Did you get that? It's Taco Sunday. We had a kitchen full of people yesterday chopping and mixing and cooking and getting everything ready so that we could come in and have fiesta time, so that we could play. I think there's a pinata over there. So that we could have a good time. They overfilled their place. And I know that there are many people in this room who do lots of things for this center, and you can see that when you give out more into life, you get more back. You're priming your spiritual pump. But when you look at the world and say, you've got to give me this, and I'm not going to go out of my comfort zone here because I don't think that I'm getting compensated appropriately for that. And so I'm going to withhold just a little bit. I'm going to come a little late. I'm going to leave a little early. I'm going to take a little bit more time on the breaks, and maybe I'll restock my office supplies at home. When we live like that, we are coming from a sense of lack and limitation and separation, and we're going to lose in life. When we falter on this idea that every thought, every word, and every act is setting spiritual law in motion, we are in big trouble. There are no passes in this teaching. There are no times that you can let it slide. There is only whether you are open to infinite presence, individualized as you, or whether you are closed to it. And just because we close down to the presence of the divine doesn't mean that the divine closed down at the presence of us. I'll say that again. Just because we close down to our idea of the presence of the divine as us doesn't mean that the divine closed down to its idea of the presence of the divine as us. Spirit is right there going, come on, baby. Come on, let's get back on track. We've got miracles to make. We've got magic to do. We've got mountains to move. We've got the world to change. Waiting for us to go from this. Don't you take advantage of me. Don't you speak disrespectfully of me. Don't you hurt my feelings to this. I am an infinite presence of spirit in me, as me, is me now. Whatever I create in life, I've got more than enough because I created it. Yeah. <laughs> Having traveled the world, I am a particular fan of indoor plumbing. <laughs> Diss this country all you want. We got good indoor plumbing here. And I'm reminded, especially with some of the freezing that's been going on up north, that the pressure of the water is always there. Just waiting for a little crack in the pipe or for your 
faucet to be turned on. You don't have to turn your faucet on and then wait for three hours for the dribble to start. It's always right there, right there with all of its force saying, come on, let me out. Let me out as a, a dribble. Let me out as a shower. Let me out as a garden hose. Turn me on as the, the water hydrant. I'm right here ready to go. Whatever you give me, I'll come shooting out. That's God as us. And we're the one who is the valve. We're the valve saying how far we're going to open, how much we're going to let through, whether or not we're going to be comfortable opening up to our magnificence or whether or not we've got to tone it down a bit. What was it I was told so many times in my youth? You're too big for your britches. <laughs> now, what does that mean anyway, other than I knew all of my clothes didn't fit? What is it that we're comfortable with? I'm comfortable with changing the world. And I'm going to do whatever it takes every day of my life to bring that about. One of the things that, that John, so we are the, don't go forward yet. We are the valve of spirit. And it is our job to notice how much water is coming through us. How much energy is coming through us. How much create, creativity is coming through us. And we notice that by how much is coming back to us. Because whatever it is we set in spiritual law is manifest and shows up as our life. So if we have a dribble, that simply means that we need to open up our valve. If we've got a fire hydrant and we want to tone it down a little bit, it just means we need to shut it down a little bit. We are always at choice as to how much moves through us. And I encourage you, if you need a little WD-40 on that, if it's a little squeaky, if you need a wrench, whatever you need to do to open that valve to the level of your comfort and then maybe a little bit more, because it's always a little bit more. This teaching never says sit on your laurels, never says you're, you're stagnant. It's always move it a little forward, move it a little forward, open up a little bit more, do a little bit more inside of you and watch how your life grows and grows and grows. That's our job, to open up our valve. And I love the metaphor of it because here we've got this infinite presence. Boy, you know when your water is out, it's terrible. Oh my God, my, I don't have any water. I got to go to a friend's house where they have water. That's like going to a practitioner. <laughs> so I love that metaphor because we don't even think about it. It's just always there waiting for us to open up to it. I've been going through this thing about this is our 25th year. Um, The, 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 I just be honest with you. There's talk out in the movement of what are John and Barbara going to do? They're 65. Are they going to retire? You know, it was Michael and, Michael and Nicole. No, you belong in Seal Beach. But there's other talk of people who say, boy, just say the word and I'll be there. No. In looking over at these last 25 years, what John and I kind of talk about and reminisce about is all the work we've put in here. Here's John Gustafson sitting in the back that built this place. All the blood, sweat, and tears that we put into this place. All of the willingness to overfill our place. What needs to happen for us to have the best uh, celebration of life that we can possibly have? What needs to happen for you to get the best spiritual inspiration that you could possibly have? I tell you, baby, it's right here, right now. This is it. It doesn't get any better than this. But what do we do to have that happen? How, you know, I remember people would come up to me and go, oh, you work so hard. I'll do the talk for you. No. I work 80 hours a week so that I can have 20 minutes on this stage. I do the talk for me. What have we done to have this website grow? How much have we given away? My colleagues say, you know, you could get $5 every time someone listens to a video. And I say, my purpose is not contingent upon $5. My purpose is contingent upon changing the world. 
that's all I'm interested in. I'm not interested in $5. Somebody wants to give me $5 million, we should talk. <laughs> but I don't sell myself out for what I'm going to get. And I want you to get this. Don't sell yourself out for what you think you're gonna get because unless you are really clear, you're never gonna get what you think you should get. And then you are at effect of what you got. You are at effect. You say, well, now my value is based on this, this check. Your value is not based on that check. Your value is based on what you bring to your life, who you are, how you show up. And if you show up as the infinite presence of the divine, you're going to have a lot of value show up in your life. It may never come in the way that you thought it was going to come. You don't work for a paycheck. You don't do that. You work to bring your genius forth. And the universe is never detour. You do what is yours to do. The, in all of our Native American teachings, the, the common thread of teaching us was pay attention to what's in front of you. Take care of what's in front of you. Don't worry about anything else. Take care of what's in front of you. And if you see it, it's yours to do. In Science of Mind, we say if you see it, it's in your consciousness. And so that was there for you. You put that there for you. If you see something on the floor, nobody else sees it, it's yours to pick up. Overfill your place. If you see something that needs to happen, overfill your place. There was a guy up north this week who bought 70 hotel rooms for homeless people so they could get into the warmth of a hotel room. Overfill your place. And people say, well, I don't have the money for 70 hotel rooms. Well, guess why not? You don't have the money for that because you have a belief that says, oh, I don't have the money for you. You can't ask me to do that. I'm just human. You are hardly human. You are God in form, infinite in its scope, magnificent beyond belief. That is who you are. And if you wake up every day and bring that into your world, if everything that shows up for you, you come with, of course I have enough. Whatever it is, I have enough. Even if I have no idea what to do with this, I have enough because that is my creation and I always have whatever I need to bring forth that creation once I have thought it. Yes. Yes. Yes, you can, you can talk to her. <laughs> I love this teaching because it puts me in control. And I can, I, I do, I do. You, you don't get to be in control of anybody else, but you are absolutely in control of you. And every time I see my life going forward, I know I did that. Every miracle, every wonderful manifestation, I did that. And every time I see it starting to go down the tubes, I know I did that. If I didn't do it, I can't fix it. So what good is that? I did that. And then I can change my thinking change my words, change my actions. And when I do that, and I overfill my place uh, every moment of every day, then I get to have a life of miracles and magic and love and you. Yeah. And so it is. <laughs> so, do we have anyone who's here with us for the first time today? Yes, I know you're pointing at David and Cody. We probably should say hi. Thank you guys for being with us. We're delighted that you're here. Oh, and we're going to start a pointing thing. Okay, that'll work. That'll work. Welcome. What's your name? Jessica. Jessica thank you for finding us this morning. It sound, looks like maybe you had a little help. Good for you. Well, thank you for being with us today. We're delighted that you're here. Uh, the card that you're getting. Uh, there, I, I say yes, so let's go ahead and do that. Yes, sir. Hi. What's your name? I can remember that. <laughs> Thank you, John. I'm really delighted you're here. Wonderful. Wonderful. Anyone else over here first time? Welcome. Thank you so much for being with us. What's your name? Reggie. Hi, Reggie. Delighted that you're here. Thank you so much. Y'all stay for lunch. They've been big plans for you. Tacos. Tacos, yeah, really. It's not even May. We're doing tacos. 
Fantastic. So uh, we're, and you may be getting a little card. If you would fill that out, uh, you can give it to one of our ambassadors at the Welcome Center. They have a gift for you out there, or you can put it uh, in the baskets when they come around here in a minute. Either way is wonderful. We're delighted you're here. Thank you so much for being with us today. Let's have our prosperity acceptors come forward. And I have these gifts that have come to us through many means. It's all good. It's all God. So take out what you're going to give. Hold it in your hand. Maybe close to your heart. That's what I like to do. Let's bless these gifts. Knowing that the presence and the power of the one is right here, right now, in, through, and as all things. That includes our money. That includes this overfilling that Barbara speaks of. This moving through life and, and experiencing it fully and completely and expressing it fully and completely. This is what we're here to do, to give ourselves fully to life so that life is fully present within us. You can't outgive God. You can't outgive life. And with absolute certainty that this is so and grateful for all this that comes to this center, we say these words together aloud. I freely and joyously give from the abundance and fullness of my overflowing wealth, knowing that my gift touches all and touches and blesses the world. And so it is.